Okay, let's take some time to talk about the parts of a beef animal, which I think will be helpful to students as we begin our discussion on some live steers in talking about muscle, balance, and correctness of finish. We'll go through this tan-colored steer and use him as an example and talk about various parts. Just to begin with some basic concepts, that line I'm drawing right there would be what we would think of as the top line of the market steer. Uh, we often make reference to the top line being strong and make reference to the bottom line running parallel to that. Bottom line of the steer would basically be from their chest right in here back to their fore rib, their body and belly, the last rib area, and back through their flank. So top line and bottom line are those two concepts depicted by those two lines right there. As we take a look at this calf and, and just starting from the front end, the head obviously right up here, the pole of that market steer would be right here where I'm drawing red on him. We have got the, the muzzle and the jaw line of that market steer. Actually the forehead would be right in here, his nostril, his eye, and we come back into the neck of the market steer itself. Uh, you will hear people refer to animals getting cresty over the top of their neck, and you're, you're talking about that crest that you would see at the top of their neck right there. As we come on back, the back of a market steer would start in here. We'd go back into the loin area, and coming farther back, we'd get back here into the rump. The tail head would set right here. The tail switch is what we see down in here. Coming back forward, we've got the shoulder right here. The brisket or floor of the chest is in this area right here. You will sometimes hear reference made to the brisket and dewlap of the steer, which is an area right in here. It's also a common description of parts of a sheep. Forearm of a market steer would be this area. We get into the fore rib. Fore rib is this area right in here. The body of a market steer, generally an area right through here. We would think about the side or the body of an animal. When you hear people make reference to an animal being better bodied, talking about the depth to that rib cage and the spring and shape to that rib cage. Belly, something we hear reference to anymore more this lower part. As we get down deeper then, the rib cage would extend itself. Rear flank area would be right here. Coming along back through that underline, we have a brisket, go past the forearm, get into the fore rib, have that belly or lower body area, and get back here into the rear rib and flank area of a market steer as we're looking at that underline. Coming on back to stifle, is this area right in here. The hip or rump of the steer, generally this area from hooks to pins, say the hook bones are right here, pin bones are the other end of the pelvic area, which we can't see because it's lying down here inside, but hooks to pins is an area that we want it to be level. We'll often refer to that as the hip. We'll talk about how level hipped animals are and we'll talk about the length of hip of the animal. I'll draw an example here of length of hip. We draw an imaginary line all the way down here from the hook bone. Think about length back through the plane of the stifle of the beef animal or length through their hip or from hooks to pins. That is an area that we want to see long and level in beef cattle. Going down just parts of the structure of the front leg right here. As we said earlier, a forearm is right in here. We'd come down here to what we commonly refer to as the knee in a live animal. Uh, we come down a little further. This is the fetlock or pastern that we hear reference to, and commonly people refer to the pastern uh, probably most of the time is the most common lingo. The hoof itself, right here, the part of that front leg that sets on the ground. As we go back to the rear leg of a beef animal, the hawk joint itself is that joint right there. Connects the upper part of the rear leg to the lower part of the rear leg. The cannon bone, which we can see on the front leg and 
the rear leg. Cannon bone is that joint that runs on the front leg from the knee down to the pastern, or on the rear leg from the hock down through the pastern. And again, rear pastern, or what some people will make reference to being the ankle. You've got dew claws. Dew claws on the, the back of the pastern joint, both front and rear legs. And again, rear foot back in here. We also want to discuss parts of the steer that uh, we make reference to that relate to parts of the carcass. The actual shoulder of the steer is this area right here. The top line of the animal, this area right in here, and the rump and round area, these areas right back here. And I want to take a little bit of time just to talk about different parts that turn into different parts of the carcass. The chuck is this area that we commonly think of in a beef carcass, if we're looking at it. And a beef carcass would be hanging by a rear shank, and so the chuck one of the four major wholesale cuts that come out of that carcass is going to be the part of that beef carcass that is hanging closest to the ground. If we think about the parts of the beef carcass where the higher valued cuts come from, like particularly steaks, prime rib roast, things of that nature, we're talking about these areas that run from the shoulder back here through the top line and even parts of the hip and we'll talk about different parts of those and make reference to wholesale cuts. The the rib itself is the area in the box that I just drew. That is where we'd get ribeye steaks and prime rib roast. As we get into the area past the last rib of that beef carcass, we get into the loin. The loin is where we start to see strip loin steaks or potentially T-bone steaks. We get back into the hip and round area, we still see sirloins and some higher valued steaks that come out of part of this area and really get more into roast and some ground products that come out of the round of a market steer or this area back in here that sets below the rump. As we look at the underline of a steer, the sheath is this area right here. Later when we'll talk about handling of a market steer and the things that we see in a live steer that indicate that they are correct in their degree of finish, a USDA grader is actually going to measure fat thickness on a beef carcass up here over the rib cage and an area about three quarters of the way over their last rib, which I depict with that right there. As we look at live cattle, we often refer to external indicators of finish. And in a species that finishes from the top down and from the front back, we can look at different areas and as they begin to fill up with fat thickness, it indicates to us that steers are getting about market ready. This area right here that I'm circling is the brisket. Based on how much fill we see down in the brisket, it indicates to us whether or not a steer is getting market ready or too thin or too fat. We talk about how much fill we're seeing in market steers back through their flank, up around their tail head based on these pones right here. And if we were to be able to see a rear shot of this steer, there's actually an area in the scrotum or cod that as it begins to fill up with fat indicates to us that we've got one that's about market ready. This is an example of a market steer that as we think of brisket fill, flank fill, about the proper degree of pone around his tail head, and just looking like the rib cage has got an adequate degree of cover over it, it that is a steer that from a distance we would call approximately a four tenths of an inch kind of market steer. He looks about on target or optimum in that external degree of finish that he's got on him. If we then think of what we handle in a market steer, as we would go into handle, and we'll show examples of this later, we're actually handling the area down the top and over the rib of the market steer and just really an area about 18 inches long and maybe four to six inches deep down the top and over the lower rib of a market steer. And it is this area right here that we talk about we'd like for there to be approximately four tenths of an inch which, which represents the overall degree of fat cover of that market steer based on those external indicators as well as what he measures with right there because a grader once he measures fat thickness in a carcass will make an adjustment for the overall carcass fat that he sees in a steer 
looking at those same areas that we just pointed out, that being the brisket, the flank, the tail head area. And the analogy that uh, I often use as we talk about an appropriate degree of finish on a market steer, if we were in the supermarket buying bananas, this steer represents the bananas we would want to buy because they are not too green and look like they needed more time on the tree, nor are they too black and look like they're overly done and overly ripe. This is that steer that, that looks about like a nice ripe yellow banana that would taste delicious and have a few black spots on him that would indicate that he is appropriate in his degree of finish or degree of doneness right now so that that beef should taste like we want it to and we're still getting an optimum red meat yield out of him. For students that would like to learn more about the parts of a beef animal, there is a page in the OSU Judging Manual that you can refer to, uh, and you can look at that and learn and memorize those parts, and it makes the discussion of live animals then easier to follow and easier for you to give oral reasons as you are familiar with the different parts of a beef animal.